So, you know, it's known out there with designers and stuff like that that your best thoughts come in the shower because your mind is occupied with nothing other than the simple task of washing up there. The other thing is this bar napkin, you know, oh, I got sketched on a bar napkin. Well, that's what happened with the hot coat system. We were out at a happy hour that turned into dinner. Me and two other guys from work were just, this thing's been on our mind for, you know, months prior to that. I sketched out what turned into the fluidizing chamber for the powder gun. I just wanted to show our customers how much we care and how much of our own blood and sweat we're putting into these products. This isn't something that's just nine to five. This is 24 seven. So powder's used in everything. You got wheels, underhood components, you got farm equipment, anything like that. Wherever you need a very durable coating, that's where you want to go to powder coating. So, so the concept of putting together some DIY powder coating system was something that I wanted to do, but we didn't have anything. There was nothing out there. There was no internet and there was no, nobody was doing any of these things. You had, you had the big boys, Gama and Norton doing industrial guns. There was no other level like there is today. Um, so, you know, once I got some powder from a local shop, I was just figuring how can I get this to lay out on a cube panel piece of metal? I tried machining different lids for salt shakers. I tried um, altering Pache airbrushes to see if they would flow through. And then finally got to um, what we have today with this fluidizing chamber by something that I remember back in the 80s in high school shop class of a flocking gun, which applied a powder onto a piece of cardboard that had some adhesive on there and it stuck. And I was like, well, that's, that's what I want to do on here. So came up with this fluidizing chamber or this cup that actually would do this. It would expel it out there. Well, that worked great, and uh, we would heat up some small parts. That's where we came up with the term hot flock, and it's used now. And, and everything was fine there until we wanted to do some valve covers, some larger pieces. We couldn't keep the heat into them. We tried packing them with sand, all of that. That's when we decided, all right, we need to do electrostatics. Started doing some more research on that. Found out that there were some power supplies and color TVs. We actually use some uh, computer monitors. They have 3,000 volt power supplies in the back of them. Just started wiring everything we could to electro to these guns until we some, you know, got something that started working. Then I went out and found out, okay, well, let's research some companies. Let's find out who makes these high volt power supplies. And that's what's turned into where we are today. All right, so you look at something like this and you think, it looks like an erector set. You just glued some stuff together. But this revolutionized and created a whole DIY segment of powder coating. Until we came out with this gun in 98, you had powder coating at the pro level. There were no other guns on the market. There was nothing for the DIY. There was no people packaging powder into smaller quantities, none of that. And your color choice, when we launched, I have a color deck here. We had about 15 to 20 colors and, and some of them were even named GE White for, um, I think it was washers or refrigerators, stuff like the John Deere Green. It was just industrial like that. So the evolution of the hot coat system took place over about a 25 year period in here. This is the gun that we started with that, that started the, the whole DIY side of itself. And then after enough feedback, a couple years this was out, enough feedback, people wanted something a little bit more uh, doing larger objects. So we needed a little bit more KV in there to get, you know, so when you're doing a motorcycle frame, something like that, and get rid of that second hand. So we went and we did this gun here. This one is a 25 kV gun, you have adjustable kV, it's one hand control that does everything from the electrostatic to the fluidizing side of it there. And this one was, this one really sold well. I, I really like this one and there's a lot of guys that are watching this that probably still have this gun and using it. The reason this one went away was we lost the power supply manufacturer and um, that, I could not find another one to replace it there. So we came back to this design. We now have a PCS 150 and a PCS 250. The PCS 150 is a fixed 15 kV gun, like the original one here, but much higher quality electronics. Yeah, it looks the same, maybe the colors are different in some labels, but the internal electronics, the heart of it, we made those far more robust, so you don't have any variations. You know, these are all linear power supplies, so whatever you put in, you're gonna get out. So if you have fluctuations here on your home current, it's gonna change out here. That's not anymore. Now you have just this nice fix, so that's been working very well. The, the PCS 250 is a nice one because that's our dual volt. So you have a switch in there, you can have 15,000 kV, like this one, or 25,000 kV. So why do you need that? Well, 25,000 kV was towards what this one was. It allows you to do those larger parts. You can do a nice big wheel, you can do intake manifolds, you can do mower decks, whatever you want to do with that. Then if you want to come back 
and do some detail second coats and stuff like that, you dial it down and you'll be able to hit those areas there. So it's, it's a real nice evolution from where we started, what we learned to where we are right now. So then we decided, well, let's go all the way to the top. Let's do a 100 kV gun. So we developed a turnkey system here that allows a lot of guys to start a small business and a shop around powder coating. You marry this up with an oven and a booth and you have everything that you need to get going. So what started 25 years ago on a bar napkin, a little dimly lit restaurant over there, is now evolving into a bright future. We're looking at new technologies, new processes, new powders, new equipment to continually bring out to keep this moving forward for the future.